Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, dear people of God. Today, Friday, 38th of August 2019, we bring to you another devotion. And we pray that the Lord will minister to us in the name of Jesus. Our text today is taken from the book of Prophet Jeremiah, chapter 7, verses 28 to 34. And the theme in focus is divine instruction. Let us pray. Our gracious Father Redeemer, we thank you for the miracle of waking up to see another day, this last Friday in the month of August. To you alone be all the glory in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your word that you have ordained for all of us today. As we examine the same, Father, we pray you give us grace to incline to your divine instruction and follow it dutifully and obediently in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' fearless name we pray. Reading from uh, Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 28 to 34, our text. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. Cut off thine ear, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on high places. For the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, said the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house which is called by my name to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Enom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Enom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place, and the carcasses of these people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven, and for the beasts of the heart, and none shall fray them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of Meath and the voice of gladness, the voice of bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for their land shall be desolate. Divine instruction again, that is our test for today. And we are very much aware of the fact that concerning Prophet Jeremiah, he was called at a tender age. Although he felt inadequate on his part, God reassured him that he had called him to a ministry and he touched his mouth and encouraged him that he had to go and deliver the message to the people without being afraid of any. And so it was in furtherance of that message that Jeremiah was telling the people of Israel of their shortcoming and their, their, their disobedience to the instruction of God. Unfortunately, on their part, they were of the erroneous opinion that because they were people of God and they were regular in the service, in the church, in the temple at their time, that nothing evil will befall them. But Jeremiah was mandated by God to remind them that as he dealt with Shiloh, where his glory departed on account of their shortcoming due to their leadership uh, inadequacy, he was ready to do the same to Jerusalem, even though Jerusalem belongs to him. And so he also reminded them that there's a need for them to obey the law because to sacrifice, to obey is better than sacrifice, as we have in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. And so they were threatened. Just like God will always warn before taking any action, this was a warning to them with the expectation that they would turn to him. Dear people of God, it is a terrible thing not to hear from God. And I must say that it is far more dangerous to hear from God and not to follow divine instruction. It is good for us to be instructed. And that is our focus, divine instruction. How much of divine instruction are you following today? Our passage advocates a lament for every nation that neglects the word of God. Neglecting the word of God is the same as not following divine instruction. And this is one thing that God does not take lightly. When you talk about an instruction, an instruction is a statement that describes how to do something. How to do something, how to go about it, an order and a command. And when that comes from the Lord, that makes it divine. And whenever it is divine, it is expected to be carried out to the letter. But unfortunately, what do we have today, just like in the time of the people of Israel in our dispensation, 
and in our nation, our generation, we have a lot of us who want to do whatever we like without recourse to God. And that has become one of the hindrances to our experiencing the breakthrough and the blessing that God has ordained for us. I must tell you that it is, it is whenever God gives instruction, he does not expect us to use our discretion to carry it out. We are to obey to the letter because it's the most high God. He knows the hand from the beginning. He knows better than each and every one of us. The Bible tells us in the book of Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 23, Jeremiah 10, 23, that it's not in the way of a man to order his own steps. The challenge we have today is that we order our own steps, we want to do things our own way without recourse to God. Such nations that forsake God, just like the people of Israel and rejected God, they are, they are uh, uh, going to experience the wrath of God as we have been poor upon the people of Israel in our test that is in focus today. They are the people of God's wrath because they disobey God's instruction, which are the highway to, to distinction. When you follow divine instruction, you are on the highway to distinction. You are on the highway to excellence. You are the highway to celebration. You are on the highway to upliftment. Anybody who does not honor divine instruction will not fit into God's end time agenda. We are daily expecting the second coming of Christ in glory. And to be part of that army of the Lord and to be relevant, we must be ready to follow instruction. There is no amount of praying and fasting that can cancel divine instruction for you and for me because God prefers obedience to your sacrifice. We have that evidently portrayed in the story of King Saul. He started as a very humble man. He was following divine instruction until when maybe power got into his head. The simple instruction was go and destroy the Amalekites. And he went there, he used his discretion and he speared Haggard. And by the time he came back, that was the beginning of his trouble. And the kingdom was taken away from him. Unfortunately, he was still alive when somebody was anointed to take his place. It is the same today with the nature of God because he has not changed. He will not bend the rule because of any one of us. You can be working, you can be still there, you can be getting all the benefit of an office, and yet you are not in tune with the Lord. And you have no reckoning with the Lord as long as you are not following his instruction. Many of us will operate on our own today without recourse to God, and it is disastrous and dangerous. We know the story of Samson as well, a man that was mightily anointed. He carried the mandate to begin to deliver the people of Israel from the Philistines, their enemy, and devil practically waited for him at the point of marriage, and he failed because he didn't honor the instruction of God. The instruction was that don't marry from among the Philistines. He had godly parents who reminded him, but he took to himself and didn't follow divine instruction, and he died in what you can call before his time. I pray none of us shall die before our time in the name of Jesus. If you want to achieve your goal in 2019 and all the rest of your life and fulfill your destiny, and you don't want your destiny to be wasted, then you must walk in and obey divine instruction. Walk in and obey divine instruction. You cannot be walking and living in disobedience and rebellion to God's instruction and expect things to go well. And expect things to go well. God gave a mandate and a promise concerning the house of Eli that they will have priests in their perpetuity from generation to generation. But from the point when Eli dishonored God, didn't follow his instruction, God changed his mind. It's amongst the dishonoring God when we don't obey his instruction. And so God changed his mind concerning the house of Eli. And so it was not well with them. And so we need to learn from that as well. Divine instruction grants you divine spirit. And divine spirit makes you outstanding in all your life's endeavor. If you want to be outstanding in your life and endeavor, then look for, seek divine instruction over every matter of life. And I'll confess to you, it is indeed over every matter of life. God knows better than us. He knows the end from the beginning, like I said earlier on. He wants to instruct us on daily basis over everything. It comes to the level of what you wear, what you eat, where you go. You need to tell God, Lord, instruct me. Because that is what he's bound to do. Instructing his own children so that he can keep us away from evil. So that we will not become victims of satanic agenda. So that we can always be guided to our place of glory and manifest the glory of God. We need to make up our mind today, dear people of God, so that we begin to obey the Lord to the letter. To obey the Lord, hear his voice. When Saul stopped hearing from God, his life became terrible, like I said. When you don't hear from God, it is terrible. And when you hear and you don't obey, it is far more dangerous. God stopped speaking to Saul. He stopped instructing him. And when Saul was hearing from him, he was the one that banished witches and wizards from the land. He had to disguise himself as a king of the land. 
to consult witches and wizards, all because he couldn't hear again from God, having disobeyed the earlier instruction. At a point in time, David had a challenge in his life when the enemy came and plundered everything he had, and he, he was so much embarrassed that those who were under him, they looked down on, upon him, and they were thinking of stoning him, as contained in the book of 1 Samuel. But at that point in time, David encouraged himself in the Lord, and the next thing he did was that he sought the face of God for instruction. And God, and asked God, your life pursue them? And God said, pursue them, you overtake them, and you recover. He followed the instruction of God to the letter, and he recovered all that the enemy had stolen. I don't know what the enemy has stolen away from you. If only you can search for the mind of God and seek his face. And if he instructs you, you can be sure that all those things will be restored unto you. That is the blessing of being instructed by the Lord from above. And I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. You might be asking, how do I know the mind of God? How does God instruct? Of course, it is through the word of God. That's why in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, the Bible says that all scriptures are written. And at, towards the end, it says it is good for instruction. For instru if you want to be instructed by God, search the scripture on a daily basis, even as we are hearing now. Search the scripture on a daily basis. Do you want to know the mind of God over any matter of your life? Search the scripture. It is embedded with a lot of instruction from the Lord. He also instructs through dream. He speaks to us through ministers of the gospel. Even as you are hearing this message, God is speaking to you. He's instructing you. He's directing our step. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 that it is only a foolish person that despises the instruction of the Lord. It is so. It is a foolish thing to say, what is God saying? I don't care what the Lord is saying. That is first uh, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. And in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 8 also, the Bible tells us that it is good to listen to the instruction of the Father. And so if God is your Father indeed, you need to listen to him. He says in the book of Malachi, if I'm your father, where is my honor? One way to honor your father is to obey his instruction. And that's why we have the example of our father of faith, Abraham, who was instructed in Genesis chapter 22, go and sacrifice your son. And God was clear in that instruction. Because if God had not been clear enough, I'm sure that Abraham, like many of us would have done, would have chosen Ishmael instead of Isaac. But, what, but God was specific. The instruction was clear. There was no ambiguity about it. He said, go and sacrifice your son, your holy son, Isaac. And thank God for our father, Abraham. He went and did exactly what God desired of him. And you returned with blessing. He didn't return empty-handed. And God said, because you have done this, you have not withheld your son, your holy son from me. He said, in blessing, the Lord will bless you. Nothing good shall be withheld from you. And he said, your children will possess the gate of the enemy. What more blessing we won't desire from God other than this? And so I want to encourage the people of God, Begin to seek for instruction of God over every matter of life, spiritual, physical, your business, in journey, in marriage, in everything. God is ever ready to instruct. God is ever ready. In the book of Proverbs chapter 8, verse 33 or so, we are made to understand that when you take instruction, it is the way of life. So it means when you don't follow divine instruction, you are walking on the path of death and destruction. I pray that none of us shall be destroyed before our time in the name of Jesus. And also in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 18, the Bible makes us understand, and it is true, that poverty and shame is the portion of those who refuse instruction. When you receive you refuse instruction, poverty and shame is what you get. Have you ever thought of it? Those days back when we were in school, primary school or secondary school, you have written five pages in an exam, only to go back to instruction and realize that you are doing the wrong thing. Or what's the, it is after the examination that you come out and realize that you have done the wrong thing because you didn't follow simple instruction. That's exactly what happens to the life of anybody who is running his life, who thinks that he can run his life without recourse to God and does everything on his own account. Sephaniah chapter 3 verse 7 says that those who do not follow divine instruction, their life will be cut off. May your life, may my life not be cut off in the name of Jesus. So, so there as you go out this last Friday in the month of August and always follow divine instruction and it shall be well with you in the mighty name of Jesus. I see God leading you to the right places, keeping you away from evil men and women, making you, leading you to your place of destiny and making you to fulfill your destiny and making your life an enviable one to the glory and honor of his name in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the joy of this last Friday in the month of August again. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you give us grace more than ever before to seek and follow your instruction in Jesus' name. Direct our steps, O oh Lord, 
in the mighty name of Jesus. It is the last Friday in the month of August. Let it not be the last for us in the land of the living. It is the weekend, O Lord. May your grace upon us never run to an end in the name of Jesus. And may we be directed by you day and night all the days of our life. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' peerless name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.